Hello and welcome back to another episode of Akiba's Trip, Undead and Undressed. Last time, Rin has summoned us to the shrine, and we're gonna go there, because, uh, well, we have nothing better to do. And in the meantime, we're gonna, you know, talk about restaurants on Pitter, but it's gonna be a brief, very brief moment before we just whisk our way over there, back to the shrine, once again. So, of course... This is important to the story as a major character has finally summoned us over here. Uh, Rin is complimenting us on our, you know, trustworthiness and our gullibleness, which is great. So basically, the gist of this situation is that Rin wants to know what, how we're involved, because we don't look like we should be involved because we're just a guy. But, um, of course... I'm gonna make a pretty bully guess there, and it's gonna be pr it's gonna be a close but not quite guess because a big bombshell is about to drop. That's right. Remember at the beginning of the game, the whole premise of the beginning of the game where we got invited to get figurines and then we you know got tested on and stuff like that. Well, it turns out that Daishihan is the source of that, which is probably not a good thing, all things considered. And Rin's uh, distrust of them is becoming clearer and clearer by the minute. Which is probably why she doesn't want us to trust Shion or anyone who works for that company. It is it is a uh, mystery right now why they're involved and why exactly they would, you know, give a shit. But it will become clear later and uh, sooner than later, probably. So, of course... Uh, I'm gonna be, you know, maybe not, but Ren wants to propose to us something in this uh, sudden CG shift. She wants to get rid of Synthesters, which is, you know, that's you know, I want it too. That sounds like the goal of this game, is to get rid of the enemy. But, uh, of course, this comes at uh, certain terms, of course. So we're both, yeah, we're both going towards the same thing here. I want to get rid of the enemies, she wants to get rid of the enemies. This seems like a pretty good arrangement here. So Rin's gonna gonna work with us. And that sounds like a pretty grand thing. And of course, the first thing is we don't ask her any questions, which, you know, whatever. And then the second one is we have to get rid of Shizuku, which is not a good thing because of a lot of reasons. One of which is just because she's a major character and that would, wouldn't be cool. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of reasons we shouldn't get rid of her. She's useful. How about that? So, naturally, uh, the Akiba Freedom Fighters and myself are gonna have a lot of trouble, uh, coming to agreement with these terms exactly. And, of course, Rin is trying to sell herself like a salesman, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's nice to know that she would come and beat up bad guys with us, but at the same time, you know, there's an air of doubt here to what her actual motives are with Shizuku specifically. And of course, once again, Zenya Amo's name is dropped in a very uh, unfortunate fashion. And yes, we will be facing him one final time. But we will also be seeing him before that one final time. Kind of a fake out, a uh, pre-boss fight before the real boss fight type of deal. So I did say that it was three times, and I'm going to stand by that, even though technically you get into an encounter with him four times. But the third time literally is not really an encounter. It's like just a brief interaction moment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up for my claim here. I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna stand my ground. So of course, we've gone back to Mogra with the news. Everyone seems to like the idea of an idol joining their group, you know, fighting with us, but yes. Of course, kiss, kicking, uh, kissing, kicking Shizuku out of the group would not quite be, uh, the thing we'd want to do, and I don't think it's a very uh, nice thing to do, of course, because she's been so helpful, and of course, other bombshells, like, uh, I'm tied to her for all eternity because of blood pacts and stuff like that, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty hard thing to just go, yeah, bye. So, of course, we're gonna have a moment of deliberation here, but... While we're deliberating about that, uh, Shizuku is okay with the proposal, though I, everyone else is not. And we don't want Shizuku to go chase after enemies alone, that wouldn't be cool, and then of course that wouldn't make any sense, because the whole point is Rin doesn't want her to fight the Synthesters, so naturally it's just not gonna work out. 
Um, <laughs> of course, here I'm gonna do a very Ito Makoto choice, which is this kind of like passive aggressive, like annoyed choice. I think I haven't done enough of those in this playthrough, but I also didn't want to pick the wrong choices when it mattered. Because I like, I, I'm not 100% on when choices matter, but I'm usually pretty good on that. I'd give it like a 90% 90, 90 accuracy rate on which choices are important over others. Um, however, I am going to prove to you that I am not always <laughs> on the ball um, soon, unfortunately. Um, though, it's, I, I assure you it's nothing game-breaking or uh, run-ruining, I guess, is my point. Anyways, I went to go see if I had anything extraneous to do, which I don't. So going to Yodabashi area immediately is pretty much just going to be the standard fare here. Obviously, it's pushing us towards some important main mission thing to do. So now we're out here, and we're going to patrol Yodabashi. Shizuku's like kind of getting in the moment, immersing, no music. I'm ruining this moment entirely. <laughs> Sorry. If you want to enjoy this, go watch a commentary list playthrough. Alright, there's your declaration of, uh, motive. See, there we go. Okay. One. That's one. I, <laughs> I messed up there. As you notice, the jingle went off, and obviously there's no way that was going towards Shion in any capacity. So naturally, yes, I did get points for Shizuku. And no, that's not going to be a problem. Now, it might seem like it's going to be a problem. And I can understand why it might seem like it's going to be a problem. But I assure you, it's not. Because the amount of points I've already racked up for Shion, like, all things considered, is far higher than Shizuku, I like, I promise you. Like, so, if anyone's worried, like, man, Demon's gonna fuck this up, I'm gonna ruin the run, and he's gonna have to re-record everything, and, yeah, that would suck, and of course, I don't wanna do that, so, of course, I've got, I've got things ready, I'm, I'm all good. I keep, like, I, like, keep, like, five saves, just, just get some of the inner workings in for you, so, no, I'm not gonna ruin this, but I, I did make a mistake, I did do a Shizuku choice, well, that's okay because I've hit pretty much almost all, I think, of Shion's uh, right choices so far, so um, it's not going to be an issue. And of course, what is an issue is these guys who we're doing a pretty good job of beating up. Because look at this a thousand damage per hit uh, is, is absolutely fantastic. However, I'm having a trouble, some trouble here grabbing uh, that girl's hair, her head, because Shizuku keeps hitting her. And of course, I get I get stuck in that uh, heart attack. So I'm just gonna go in and, and try to get rid of this girl. Of course, she's wearing leggings, which I had failed to notice. So I'm just gonna go in for the real kill shots here. The leggings are always very deceiving to me um, because I can't tell if they're pants or not because they're not exactly as translucent as it could be to make it a little bit more obvious, but it's not a big deal. So of course, I'm trying to hit this girl's uh, body. Um, and failing, mostly because she's dodging, and also because Shizuku keeps hitting her, which is making this a lot harder than it has, to be honest. Um, but it's okay. There we take care of her, 105 chain. Pretty, pretty decent. Um, and of course, that is not the end of this whole thing right here. After this loading screen, of course, our good friend. That's right. Our good friend. Dramatic tension. Our good friend. <laughs> Senya <gasps> um <laughs> is here. And yes, this is the third but not third encounter. This is not an encounter. Okay, I said three, I'm sticking by it. This is like part one of the third encounter. There are two parts. The reason is just is it is just like it is the third encounter. O only though when you beat his first form here, we are not going it's going to end this whole scene. And then we're gonna go through a very long thing first before we fight him again, which will be like the like the second stage of the fight, and that's gonna be like the final fight. So I, I'm telling you, this is a, this is the third encounter, but it's like the first part. It's like not all of it. So there are three. I'm standing by it. I'll defend it in court. Whatever you want, if you really care. I stand by my claim here of a three encounters Zenya thing, and this is just part one. And it's, yes, Hyper's, Hyper Zenya. He glows a, a piss yellow aura around himself. 
And I mean, it's got that like just brown enough yellow look to radiate a horrible variation on the color yellow. Really, Xenio's not going to be much harder than ever, <laughs> of course, even though he's glowing that uh, vicious yellow aura. He still does the same attacks. And the reason I did not use Unison Strip here is a very simple one, and it's that I didn't want to use it on him because I knew this was only going to be a one-stage fight in this particular uh, setting. Of course, he can heal, and you notice that. However, it's not as uh, it's not as dire as you might think because getting it whittled down to the point where this encounter is going to end, especially with my damage, is incredibly easy. And luckily, because he's attacking Shizuku, this is making it even easier. So as you can see, that's it. That is it for the encounter here. We're not going to fight him again in Yodobashi. So this is it here. But this is not the end of the fight. Just imagine there's a really huge intermission in between when we fight Zenya next. And actually the fight happens. And uh, then you'll get an illusion of a fight that has two parts. But yes, really this is it. This isn't even the fight. Now we're going to get this cutscene here. And Zenya can still move, but we're not going to be able to fight him back this time. Instead, he's going to come over here and hit us with his big stupid rod. And of course, we can't do anything because this is a cutscene. Or rather, uh, Ren's going to come parry him with her big keyboard. And he's going to try to hit us with his big stupid rod. And of course, Rin came back, despite the fact that she said she was not going to. Because... Oh, and then there's the bombshell. Oh my god, Rin and Shizuku are sisters. What? I never guessed in a million years that would have ever been true. What? A cube of strip, you've played me like a fool. And of course, Rin got hit by that big rod. And, and it's very hurt because that was a hyper rod. That wasn't like Xenia's normal rod attack. And of course, Xenia is obviously a pretty big fan of Rin, so you feel a little uh, emotionally charged about this one. And also in a, in a great turn of events, now he's got that, like, purple poison gas cloud around him. Because, um, his hyper form is kind of not working in the way that he probably would have liked, so it's gonna, like, suck back into him. He's getting, uh, attacked by black and red, uh, negative gases. And of course, naturally here, we could probably have finished him off, but he's gonna run away. So here is the reason we're not fighting him again immediately, which is that he's a little pussy and he's gonna run away And we're gonna have to face him in the battle arena So of course he's gonna run away to the battle arena And we're gonna be able to really give him the final fight and it we're gonna defeat hyper Xenia all all for one Finally done Consider it a closing of the curtain on him after he you know called us all these mean words called me garbage and he's talking about royalty I mean look at this guy he's got a business suit on and so he's gonna like stumble away like a little little pansy through the metal gate now of course uh, that means we're not gonna fight him until the battle arena which it just so happens to be uh, after a few other things first now Ren is of course is like why did you get involved? This is the reason. So now we know why she, uh, Rin wanted Shizuku out of the group, which is that they're sisters. And honestly, it's not a huge bombshell. Um, of course, I already knew, having played this game several times. But I think even when I played this game through the first time, I was like, they're related. Like, they don't look entirely alike, but there's something about them that it's like, yeah, they're related. It's just, it's just a natural bombshell to drop, which is, you know, whatever, I mean, I'm all in, I'm all in for it, and, uh, that's cool, but, yes, they are sisters, Shizuku is the big sister, and there's more bombshells to be dropped in the similar vein here. The rest of this, uh, I'll just tell you now, you can go ahead and look at the timer if you want, and I'm sure you're gonna be like, oh, um, the rest of this is a cutscene, it is a very, very long cutscene like rivaling like the beginning of the game cutscenes and of course Toko's gonna be the one surprised here if no one else was just so someone was really uh, surprised about the sister bombshell here so and and Pops is gonna claim dibs on this one so of course they're playing off tropes again here or Pops is playing on tropes again here yeah so, anyways, uh, this is a very story-heavy part of the game, 
if you couldn't guess that. Naturally, this sister's bombshell is a big deal. Um, this is the calm, I wouldn't call it calm really, but it's a, it's the moment before the big battle against Zenya, who up till now has seemed like the main enemy, but of course isn't. I mean, I already spoiled that for you. Uh, he's like the, the, what, what was I calling him? The, the big bad, but not the biggest bad in the game. So of course this is a big deal. Um, so now we're going to get some exposition thrown in. Shizuku uh, was left in the Night Eater Village alone. Rin wrote a 50-page note, quote-unquote, um, to keep her away, full of mean, uh, just mean stuff. Real, real condescending remarks. Real heartbreaking statements. And of course, Shizuku didn't know what to do, and instead did the opposite of what Rin was hoping she would do, and of course came to Akihabara. So... So now, Shizuku... Is very happy to see Rin wake from her slumber after getting rotted, not sexually, by Zenya, Amo. And so Rin, yes, Rin did her best to try to get Shizuku to not be involved, and of course failed, very miserably in a lot of ways, honestly. Uh, writing a horrible note, which made Shizuku come to Akiba, trying to get her to leave the Akiba Freedom Fighters, which didn't work. Trying to be ominous, which didn't work. She re really Rin failed in just about every, uh, you know, trying to be precautious and not quite working. Uh, precautious is a word. I'm not looking at Webster right now, so don't call me out. So, of course, uh, Rin, Rin and Shizuku are gonna have a bonding, you know, makeup sisters moment. Rin's gonna feel bad that she wrote a 50 page uh, hate letter. And Shizuku's gonna feel mild pain and mild trauma. And of course, Rin is gonna beg for forgiveness, which this is a happy game for happy people where love is powers over all things. And of course, they're gonna come back together as sisters, as friends, as, as you know, bonding. And of course, yeah, I know if I, if I got a 50 page hate letter, I would probably feel a little, uh, a little reluctant. Uh, but of course, this is this is a keep us trip. This is this is a good this is a happy game. And of course, uh, I, I picked the natural uh, choice there, but um, it's one of those choices that, of course, no matter what you pick, doesn't really get uh, approached in any different capacities it would otherwise. Um, Ren's gonna take the other guest room that we don't see. And Ren's gonna do her like half, I'm still like a bitter idol, and half, I'm like a grateful, I'm a grateful person who feels bad about all the bad things I've done. And of course, just when you think it's over, it's not over. <laughs> we're gonna get, we're gonna gang up together. Ren's, I guess, had a bit of a nap. Now she's like, got a more genuine smile on her face. Of course, uh, we're gonna compare idols to Night Eaters, which is kind of a weird comparison, but that's cool. So Ren, of course, is gonna drop her 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 game plan or what it was, what her game plan was in the context of what was happening. So Ren's uh, why is Ren a pop idol? If she came from the Nadir village to try to stop the sisters, why is Ren a pop idol? Now that's a pretty good question to ask, and of course, uh, it's a pretty good answer to await. And so she's gonna discuss it now. Of course, she thinks she's a terrible idol, which we wouldn't know, because we can't really tell. Um, but naturally, she has fans, so I guess if you're talking about idolism here, if we're going to talk about philosophy of idols, obviously she succeeded in some way, whether she can sing or not. Of course, uh, Toko's going to drop that hot knowledge right there. I actually accidentally skipped her line there. One of the few times I'll ever do that in this game, because I've been trying to you know, play them out. Uh, I complain a lot about how long the cutscenes are, but it's my fault because I very deliberately made this a let's play where I wanted all the cutscenes to play out as naturally as the lines did so you could get like the full experience. So I guess it's really on me whether or not I wanted to wait uh, 14 minutes for this cutscene. <laughs> but I did. So here we go. Uh, Shizuku and Ren are having a very, a very great moment of bonding. <laughs> And uh, Shizuku's gonna drop her sudden trauma, or really, long-lasting trauma. 50-page hate letter, guys. Truly, uh, it is hard to believe that Rin would be capable of such fake malice. 
And of course, now she's gonna insult us, the player character, the hero, because we're not worthy, apparently, of Shizuku's blood pack, which I've never heard something so heinous in my entire life. Uh, we're perfectly capable with our microphone, which is very powerful, and our clothes, which are very appropriate. So I don't know what, what she's on about. Of course, I, I, I almost picked the, like, Link from the Link cartoon uh, choice there. I was, I was feeling a little bit of that, uh, that, <laughs> that 90s Link cartoon vibe coming on, but no, I went for the, uh, the very inappropriate uh, phallic gesture. Which, of course, is very fitting for my character type. So, Rin, Rin and Shizuku have a very, like, very sisterly relationship, but Rin obviously views Shizuku a lot more highly than otherwise. And, of course, Kaito is, uh, gonna jump in and save us from Nana's pressure, which she might explode at any moment, because Rin just passed through a barrier that should not have been crossed, a line, sacrilege, she insulted me. And Nana does not, not like that, because Nana's right to insult her brother is very... It's very sacred. But of course, Nana's not gonna get away from Rin's admiration, which is suddenly oncoming. And this, uh... She's gonna drop another tr uh, uh, long-lived trope, which is the not entirely blood-related trope. But no, Nana's gonna, gonna go ahead and be like, yeah, no, we're, we're definitely related. None of that, none of that, we're not dropping any of that Oremo shit here, guys. I'm not gonna drop any of that, uh... Yosuga no Sora. Get it? Because, you know, like. Incest. Right? If you don't know what that is, look it up, I guess, or, or not. If you, if you really want to. I, I wouldn't recommend it. You know? You get the point. We're, we're blood related. It's not it's not like incest. There you go. Um, Alright, we're, we're gonna move on. Um. Rin's gonna trust us for now, and uh, we're gonna, you know, take that, I guess. You know, we're very grace- we're very graceful. And, uh, the, you're gonna see that Rin's, uh, kind of a variety of things. And she's sometimes gentle and kind, and sometimes not. And of course, Shizuku wants to question, uh, Rin's motives. And before she can do that, uh, Shion's gonna show up. Of course! The person we've been wanting to see this entire time. Which is great! And of course, Rin and Shion are finally gonna meet face to face. They're finally going to come to head. A head. On, uh, their problems. Though Shion has no problems with her, it's kind of problems on the other way around. So Shion's here for a very specific reason, and of course Shizuku has allowed graciously for that reason to happen. So, of course Shion's gonna reveal her motives on allowing Rin to be part of the company. Which is going to be great, because... I guess that is a great thing. So they could finally, you know, come to terms with each other, and truly uh, work together as friends to fight the enemy. And Rin, when Rin gets like really like serious and like, I figured it all out, monk style, like she's just going on and on with that like deep brooding voice. I found it. I finally realized it. So she's gonna go confrontational on Shion, and of course, uh, Shion has to have an alibi here, so let's hear it, even though she's obviously not guilty. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. She's not guilty. Do you look at her? Does she look guilty to you? Because she's not. She's not guilty. So, she's been playing hooky with us, actually. And it's because she can't even go to work. And it all makes sense. So basically, her corporate politics are happening. Again. They're ensuing. They're difficult. And shion has been hiding. Mostly with us. Because corporate politics are so dangerous. And so, R the R&D department's been going through medical breakthroughs. And of course, it's been something about cell acceleration. And of course, that could only mean one thing. That's right, synthesters. And it all comes down to them. See, drugs aren't always good. And these R&D drugs that turn people into synthesters, um... <laughs> well, they're not good either. So, naturally, Daishion has a first-hand involvement, and shion has been trying to get out of it, and uh, can't really do that, even though she's the CEO, because, you know, coup d'etat, corporate politics, uh, other dangerous things, 
Uh, <laughs> hierarchies? I don't know. It's bad. So Rin, of course, with her, really? Subdued voice. It's gonna say, yes. Yeah, they're probably, probably related. And so we could probably g make, take a good guess and say, yeah. Someone in Daishuan that we might have already met, wink wink, is the person behind this whole synthesizer deal in the company. Because the corporate politics part is very, very confusing and difficult. So of course, Xion unfortunately was uh, not the first one to know about it. Naturally due to the fact that uh, someone in the company was a step ahead of her. And involved. So Xion's uh, alibi is that. I think it's pretty good. And uh, uh, Pops here dropping a little bit of uh, a little bit of wisdom here. So of course, as the company president, Xion's got to right the wrongs of the corporate greed and mi and abuse. So now she's gonna win Rin's heart in one way or another. So that's all good. We're getting all sorts of friendly now. The gang's all here, and of course Rin's gonna be a little, you know, a little like that. She's gonna be a little like, I don't know, but you know, don't worry, they'll be friends by the end of it, I promise. Cause Shion and I are gonna be together, hopefully, if I don't make any more wrong choices. I'm just kidding, it's not gonna happen. Anyway, so, that's the other big bombshell, I guess, is that Shion's dealing with corporate politics. And of course, there we go. I got another Xion choice down and out. Let's say that evens out the wrong choice I made earlier. So it's all good. We're uh, we're evening out the creases of our, our our bad choices. And we're gonna keep Xion on the up and up. So it's all good. We're all good. Just saying. So of course, Rin's gonna be like, oh, I don't still don't trust you, but we trust her. Because, of course, we have to get together with her, so we don't trust her that maybe we'll just aid and abet some sort of horrible corporate uh, takeover, which will be whatever, because you know what? Consequences are for fools. And it's, and it's alright. Because we're playing this game to beat up people, so we're not very good anyway. And honestly, if I get a bad end as Ido and Makoto, that's only fitting. So now we're going to talk about the real issue at hand, which is Zenya Amo at the Battle Arena. Which is an issue. Of course we have to go and finally finish him off, because I mean, it's been enough blue balling on that, we gotta go take him down. So, we're gonna do that. And of course that involves us going to the battle arena. And of course we're gonna fight. And of course I, once again, <laughs> screw up! <laughs> and picked the wrong choice! And I'm not even sure whose choice that was for, it might have been Shizuku's? Heck, it might have been Toko's. Like... I don't know. I, I'm shrugging here, I don't know. Uh, but it was, uh, once again, a choice for someone else than Xion. Right when I had rightened my own wrongs. That's okay. I still got it under control. Have some faith in me. I promise. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this episode of Akiba's Trip, Undead and Undressed. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stick around and keep watching. And I will see you next time.